Hey everybody, what is happening? Welcome to the Tube Buddy live stream. I am Owen Video. I am your host today, and we are going to be talking about five. Uh oh, you're going to hear it. We are going to be talking about five live streaming tips that will help you to increase your watch time, not just on your live, but on every single video that you do. And I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. Hey, before we jump into the content today, I want to know who's watching. So whether you're watching live or on the replay, let me know who you are and answer this question. How's your watch time doing? Right? It doesn't need to be, hey, braggadocious. It doesn't need to be braggadocious, right? It doesn't need to be like, oh, my watch time's amazing. And it doesn't need to be kind of like, oh, my watch time is, is horrible. I just love to know how it's doing. Is it where you want it to be? Is it not where you want it to be? And then I'd like to dig into the comments with you and start to work some of that stuff out, maybe get involved in a conversation with you. So it's good to see you out there today. Uh, I'm excited to be back on the TubeBuddy channel. I missed last month due to an illness, and I'm back here to hang out with you guys again today. So let's, let's see. see who is out there today starting at the top. I know my man Bean is out there. Clayton Life Story. What's up, my man? Good to see you. Games Oracle is logging in. Dad of three. Hey, dad of three. Live stream about a live. Tell me about what your channel's about. Andrew can. <laughs> Andrew can. The man. Hey, I missed you yesterday at the two buddy offices saying live section. Beanie Draws is out there today. Foul Fish is logging in. Leather Roke. Leather Rock. Leather Rock, probably. Lily Tree. Danny's TV. Beanie Draws is saying, yo, 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 Raptor Mods. Good to see you. Glad to see you guys here. I missed you guys last month. I stream on the channel on the, the second Wednesday of every month. And today, uh, yeah, I missed last month due to an illness. So I feel like it's been a while uh, since I've been with the TubeBuddy family. So I was at the TubeBuddy offices yesterday. I met with Phil and the team. We're just hanging out. We're talking about doing some really cool things. So it's glad I'm glad to be back here with you guys today. Uh-oh, Aaron Jemison is logging in. Aaron Jemison, I gotta, I gotta give it up for you, Aaron Jemison. Can you guys hear my sound effects okay? I, I've got sound effects for you today, but Aaron Jemison was just with me on my live podcast, and he's back again on this show. He says, I just can't get enough Owen today. Hey, it's an addiction, my friend, and I, pr I, I suggest you don't seek help. Mad Scott's Gaming is saying, uh, hey, guys, and we've got Kingdom Hearts Master Shannon Vlogs is saying, my watch time is okay, but I can always improve. I hear that. I hear that. Hey, everybody. Normally, I wouldn't be here today, but I am homesick. That's Brittany Dane. I'm so glad to hear that. Andrew Can is saying, I'm Andrew. My watch time is in the green. Glad to hear that. Now, Andrew, you've got a gaming channel, correct? Um, Sun Tour Abby says, my watch time sucks. I'm ready to learn and to listen. Shannon Vlogs is saying, well, the whole community is here, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm excited to hear what you guys are saying about your watch time because watch time has been a big focus for me. And we've been implementing these five techniques that I'm going to go through today to improve the watch time, not just on our live videos. And I'm sort of like trying to adjust my camera here. I'm a freak about headroom. I am a headroom freak. Uh, not just on our live videos, but we're also carrying some of these tactics over to our pre-recorded videos too and you know that's a money ideas can you guys hear the sound effects i would love to know i want to make sure you guys can hear my my sound effects i'm doing some fun things with it if i say anything wrong ah, you might hear the buzzer sound uh, or if you say something wrong watch that attitude sir but i'm going to share with you guys these five tips today and i want to sort of go through some examples so i'm going to be sharing you with you guys these tips that i'm using but also I want to show you other people that are sort of taking in these same tactics as well. Gord Iceman, I'm so glad you're here, Gord, because Gord has been crushing his watch time lately using live video uh, to do that. El Economista, YouTuber, Sickly Gamer is saying, I love the sound effects, bro. Well, hey, look, I am infamous for using sound effects. Wow, the infamous? Infamous? 
Beanie Draws say Owen kills it with sound effects. Nick Nimmin is in the room. Everybody give it up for Nick Nimmin. We were just on the uh, Business of Video podcast, which you can check out on Facebook. Just check out Owen Video. We're live, me and Nick Nimmin, every Wednesday with a new guest talking about video, video marketing, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Go to thebusinessofvideopodcast.com and check it out. Okay, so today, guys, I want to talk about five um, five tactics that will help you to increase your watch time. Now, specifically, these are live streaming tactics. These are things that are very easy to do to build into your live stream. And I want to sort of preface it with this. I'm going to jump right into the content today. And I want you guys to ask me your questions in the comment area. Okay. So if you've got questions, um, uh, it looks like, yeah, I love how you did this, Chris. Put like Owen question or, or put like a big fat emoji or something so I can see it. Okay, and then um, uh, and then I'm going to try to go back to all of your, your questions and try to get to as many of them as I can today. It would be rad. Brian G. Johnson in the room. I love it when we have the ballers in here today. Uh, Brian G. Johnson, Nick Nim, and other streamers for YouTube. Guys, we're going to be talking about some watch time tactics, and, and I want to go into them right now. I'm going to be showing you guys some examples. Tip number one, be demonstrative. Be demonstrative. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, oh, you know, my kids hear that and they think be a monster. No, being demonstrative means you need to show people something. Okay, now I had a guest on my show last week. I do a live show for a company called BeLive.TV, and I had a guest on my show who talked. She's got, okay, she's got a Facebook watch page. She has all these amazing tools Okay, at her disposal, and her advice was very simple. She says, when you open up your live stream video, okay, you've got to show people something. Give them a reason to stop because here's the deal, guys. Everybody is doing this. Watch. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my show. Okay, we're going to get started in just a minute as soon as everybody shows up. So just give it a minute. Is everybody there? Is everybody there? Is, my, is it on? Is it on? Is everything on? Everybody does this sort of like wacky, uh, this sort of like wacky, I'm going to waste everybody's time for five minutes thing. Uh, don't do that, guys. When you start your live stream, if you want people to watch and not to tune out, show them something in your hand right off the bat. Okay, so for example, by the way, I've got this new dummy phone. Okay, it's uh, it's actually it looks just like an iPhone, but there's no power in it. It doesn't that button doesn't even press at all. It's actually a dummy phone that I use specifically for these sort of examples. Okay, so I can have like a phone in front of me. But here's the idea. Let's say that your live stream opens up, and the first thing you do is, hey every, hey everybody, you've got to check out this brand new app I've been playing with. You're gonna love it. We're gonna talk about it today. Coming up. Okay, the very first thing you do is you show your audience something. Now, that can be either handing it to the camera, and notice how I can kind of come out here and make it look cool. It can be handed something to the camera. Uh, you can also move your webcam down, right? I could do something like this. Hey, guys, I'm going to be sharing with you today the top five tools I always keep on my desk at all time. You got to check this out. Boom, you know, and you can move the camera down there. Just the camera movement alone. By the way, I'm really glad. I didn't have any contraband on my desk. You know what I mean? It's like I throw it down here. There's a crack pipe, you know, right right down there. How many of you guys smoke crack on your live streams? Just let me know in the comment section below so we can come over and arrest you. Don't do drugs. So, look, the idea is this, is that right when your video opens up, whether this is live or a pre-recorded video, and again, it's kind of like from a live video perspective, but you can do these things on your pre-recorded video. Show the audience something, right? We also call this a pattern interrupt, okay? Uh, this is where you're sort of breaking up the visuals and helping the audience to see that you're going to go in depth on something and it's going to be more than just a talking head video. In fact, guys, it's a big reason why we show comments on the screen when we're going live is because we want you guys to see that there's something going on here that makes this live stream different from the other live streams. Now, to give you guys an example, I want to go to a screen share here. And I want to share um I want to share somebody that that I think live streams super well.
All right, can you guys can you guys hear me now? I think that the audio wasn't working a second ago. So this is a friend of mine. This guy named is Billy Funk, and Billy Funk is an amazing live streamer on Facebook. Check out check out how he starts his live stream right here. Hey, what's up, Facebook? Billy Funk here, coming at you live from See that? San Diego. See it? Why? Why See? am I glistening right now? That's just that's not natural. That can't be natural. Book face, what did you do to me again? All right, let me go back over here. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better, a little bit more normal. All right, here we go. So today we're going to be talking about... What's up, John Melton? Look, Bam watch this. Look at profile. that. He fully brings the, the whiteboard uh, uh, into the scenario. And, oh, look at that. I, I just increased the, the whole screen for everybody. Now, I don't want to go too much more into that, but you guys noticed a couple different things that he did. What did you notice in that video? Okay, the first thing he did was he had a filter on his teeth and he he tried to make it pretend like he didn't do that on purpose, right? He absolutely did it on purpose, right? All media is constructed. So the whole idea is he opens up his video with this sparkly filter on his teeth. And then after that, he brings in a whiteboard, right? He brings in a whiteboard. Now, his actual whiteboard thing is going to parlay into a different a different point that I want to make. But the very first thing he did is that he showed you something. He was showing you something. You know who else does a really good job at this? In fact, I want you to tag somebody in the comments right now or or mention somebody in the comment section right now who does a really great job of being demonstrative in the very beginning of their video. I'm going to show you one more example. And this is somebody who I think deserves, really deserves a, a big old shout out. Okay. I'm from L.A. I'm telling you, I grew up with Power 106 and K-Rock. I know you guys know those stations, Power 106 and K-Rock. I, I think K-Rock's still around. I don't know if Power 106 is still around. These radio stations, they switch around all the time. But I, I swear, I swear on my baby's soul, right, if that's a thing you can do, that uh, they used to say shot out. Hey, I want to give a shot out to my boy Drake. I want to give a shot out to my – I learned literally two months ago that it's shout out. And I think it's stupid. I think shot out sounds better. So I might say shot out. You have to forgive me if I do. I want to give a shot out to this person because she is phenomenal. And I'm talking about no other than Jen Masumba. All right, I want you guys to watch this video here. This is an, a great example of how to be demonstrative in a pre-recorded YouTube video. So let's go to her channel right now. And I want to play this video for you. Watch, just watch how, I got to rewind it. Watch how she does. What she that does. is one of the most popular vloggers and YouTubers out there. I used to aspire to be like him, and then I took a look around. I live in the country, so making a cool city landscape time lapse would be impossible. So I tried to seek out some alternatives. For my time lapse, I stirred up an ant pile and filmed what happened. Stop. Then I built my own cityscape. Cool, right? Since I barely have 100 subscribers and no one sends me free stuff, I decided to do Walmart time and open up my Walmart bags for my viewers' entertainment. But still, nobody watched. Then I remember Casey. Okay, so here we go. Here's what we're looking at, guys. We've been into this video for about 30 seconds, and she has shown us four, five different scenes, right? I love how she goes, hey, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how I, I, I'm trying to imi imitate uh, uh, Casey Neistat. And then I, I, I poked at an ant farm, right? By the way, Pete is going to come after you for that one, Jen. I think we all we all know that. But you guys are saying my, my screen is laggy. Hopefully it's watchable. Hey, if it's not watchable, uh, somebody reached me on Facebook Messenger. And uh, it says that my audio is out of sync. My audio is out of sync. Hopefully, it will get better and better. Maybe I am using too much stuff here. I know that I can't use the... Um, oh, yeah, let's do this. Let's go podcast setup. That might help it a little bit, guys. I appreciate the feedback. You know, it's so hard to kind of test this stuff because you really never know uh, how well your stream is going to do until you actually go live. So hopefully uh, that will that will figure it out. Uh, Andrew says it's better now, and I think that's probably going to going to work out for us today. What Jen did here in this video, okay, is she showed us immediately that she was going to be digging into some different things. So the audience goes, the audience viewer is watching and saying, let's see what else they have. Okay, Nick and I, we just did a show this morning that uh, showed a client that has a video card. It's literally like a like a Hallmark card, right? But when you but when you open it up, double audio. Jeez, my life today, guys. 
Double rainbow. Are we better? Uh, when you open up the audio card, a video starts playing right inside the card. So we wanted to show that to the audience, okay? So that my number one tip for you right now is be demonstrative. And the best way to do that is to open up your show with a headline, with a hook, and then immediately show the audience that you're going to dig into something, okay? What this does is it creates an intrigue. It creates desire. Andrew Can is saying, perfect. Let's make sure that the, can I just check the audio real fast? Just do it! Okay, all right. Shia, relax, dude. <laughs> it's not that, guy. it's not that funny. It's not. It's not that funny. You know, realistically, the laugh track uh, reminds me of, uh, uh, you know, being in school. You know what I mean? You would tell jokes and then, and then people would, would, would laugh at you. When I tell jokes, however, it's more... I get that sort of thing. But look, here's here's what I'm trying to tell you is the audience goes, hey, I'd like to see more. I guess I'm going to see something. It's not just going to be Owen against a boring back wall, okay, talking about, talking about stuff, okay? And that brings me to point number two. Who can guess what point number two is? You're probably right. I want to check audio on all my channels here. Okay, hopefully we're sounding good, is you got to spice up your background, guys. You, you have to, you have to, you have to spice up your background. Here's the thing. We, we have all seen the backgrounds with the plain orange, beige, blah, white walls. We all have them. Okay, but you guys know this is sort of like a, a wrapping. It's like a, 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 a draperage that I can get. You can get on Amazon. And I feel like I'm giving away all my secrets here. But here's the deal. Like... Uh, you know, I want I want to see you guys do better live streams. I want to see you guys increase your watch time and get more people logging in. When you've got this boring white, beige, blah, tapioca wall behind you, it dulls the eyes. It really does. And so you've got to add things in your background that garner people's attention. So I've got the emoji in the background. I've got the word video in the back. I've got the subscribe thing in the background. But also notice how I've got the on-air sign here. Let's see if I can point to it without looking. The on-air sign here. And then I've got the red subscribe thing here that sort of all vertexes right into, right into my eyeballs. Okay, that was all uh, pretty much an accident that I was like, oh, wow, that looks good. But balance. Create a, a great-looking background design that has some balance to it. Now, I want to show you another example of a YouTuber that I just love. She's a YouTuber. She's a live streamer. Her company sets up live streaming for Michael Hyatt. She, they set it up for, I got to make sure my audio is all set up, Michael Hyatt, Amy Porterfield, Mari Smith, all these bigwigs in the industry. So I'm talking about none other than Luria Petrucci and David Foster over at Live Streaming Pros. They did a whole episode today. Okay, I'm going to post this in the comment section right now. Actually, Andrew, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to give this to you in Messenger. I'm going to have you uh, you paste that into the comment section. You guys can see everything I'm doing. How embarrassing. Oh, my gosh. How embarrassing. It's like I get this feeling that nobody's watching, and then it's like, oh, no, everybody. Everybody is watching. So here's, here's what I want to do. I want to show you a little bit about what – And, yes, it does – cover certain things up so now this whole I, I just wanted to get her off that that sort of awkward uh image and now we're on another awkward image but this whole training that link that that andrew's going to share with you guys is a whole training on how to make your background set look good but let's just sort of analyze what she's got here okay she's using shelves in the background with very simple there's like the you know the uh, bb82 d2 whatever his name is back there and we've got some books back here but notice how the shelves are not full Okay, notice how the shelves are not full there. They're just sort of got stuff in it. It draws the attention away. Look what's going on behind her. You see that brick, that white brick stuff there? Guys, maybe you've seen that. Maybe you've seen it somewhere before. Where, Where have, have you seen, seen a brick, a brick, a brick layout? Hmm. I, I can't, hmm, I can't, I can't, I can't remember where it is. is. Very, very, very simple, simple patterns, patterns that, that you guys can go pick up. You can even put a, a curtain or a drapery behind you. Or you know what my good friend Molly Mahoney does? Molly Mahoney, I'm not on, I'm I'm not not on auto, auto switch. switch Molly, Molly Mahoney, Mahoney 
will actually uh, uh, put uh, like wall vinyl. You go down to Target, Walmart, you spend 15 bucks on just a thin strip of vinyl that goes behind you in these neat little patterns. This spices up your background. It makes your background more exciting to be in. Think about when you go into a doctor's office. You go into a doctor's office and there's what? Chairs, a small table, screaming babies, a jar full of old candy, and maybe some some outdated episode or outdated magazines of uh, uh, highlights. You guys remember highlights? And, and maybe like a Sports Illustrated from 10 years ago. Okay? And you're immediately turned off to the situation. You know you're going to be in a boring environment for the next little while. Is your live stream more like a doctor's office than a live video? Okay, and that could be because you've got a boring background. So watch the video that we're posting in the chat box here, okay? And see, I want to challenge all of you guys to do one thing this week to make your background more interesting. You will keep viewers. You will increase your comments. I get comments all the time. What does the O1 mean? You know, where did you get the on air sign? And and these different, uh, you know, people because people don't realize that this says Owen video, right? That's what it says. They're asking about the calendar. Oh, your calendar's wrong. And I say, no, your head's wrong. And I get that. I get that. What do you guys have to say? Let's go to some of the comments. See what you guys are talking about in there. So we've talked about two different things. We've talked about uh, be demonstrative, and we've talked about your background set. And those two things really... Uh, go hand in hand, man. Andrew, you just—you guys are killing me today with the audio. What is going? We got an echo in the audio. It's probably because I got two sources on. Yeah, I do. I got two sources on. I, you know, I told you guys. It's been a month. It's been a month. I'm losing it. I'm losing my grip. How's that? Is that better? I think that's better. Good. Let's go to. Let's see what you guys are talking about in the comments section. I love hearing from you guys, and you're all talking about the audio. Here I am doing the best content of my life, and it's like, oh, and your microphone sucks. Uh, OBS is actually easy to set up in case you're looking for another software. No, I am looking for five more hands. That's what I'm looking for. And also 17 more hours in the day. If you can help me out with those two things, that's what we are looking for. Paul Peck is saying, you're all good, Owen. It's better now. It's better now. I wish I got those types of replies after lovemaking. Oh, it's better now. Now, that's that's not appropriate. I don't think that that is the kind of stuff that we should be talking about. I know. Uh, I know. Sorry. Yeah, it's going. It's 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 next. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I get it. I get it. Um, when when one Owen simply isn't enough, double Owen. Yeah. <laughs> and they're they're um they're uh they're talking about. I was just doing live stream on um on Facebook this morning. So it's great to be out here doing it with Jason. Says OBS rules. Zombified gamer says you're a funny dude. Gord Eisman is saying Owen is full of surprises. Uh, yeah, but I'm also, you know, could be, uh, a ticking time bomb. You have no idea, uh, when I might explode. So we have to be, we have to be careful with all this. All right, what else? What else do we have going on today? So we've talked about being demonstrative, and we've talked about, uh, uh having a better background. And these are things that are going to help you keep your viewers on your channel longer. What else? Okay, I want to talk about number three, get comments early. Get comments early because here's how the Facebook and the YouTube algorithm, now they all work differently. They both work differently, but let's talk about the general gist of these things, okay? The algorithms respond to conversation. They respond to conversation. In fact, a whole lot of what YouTube's doing, by the way, guys, are you loving the changes on YouTube? Yes or no, meaning the algorithm changes. Yes or no. And I'd love to hear you emote. I'd love to hear you tell me why. But all these changes about, oh, you need, uh, you know, uh, uh, 4,000 minutes of watch time. You need 1,000 subscribers. Do you guys like that or do you not like that? How about how about what they're doing with Logan Paul? Do you like that or do you do you not like that? I'd love to know in your, your comment section, in the comment section right now. Um, uh, Beanie is saying, I'm indifferent to the changes. Uh, Aaron Jemison is saying no. Um, Sane Auto is saying no. Art with Max is saying I've seen no difference. Art with Max, what do you do, by the way? I'd love to know what your channel's about because my family loves to draw. Uh, we watch Beanie Draws. There's another one, a father and a son. E for electric. Good to see you, Alex, is saying nope. 
Andrew Can is saying, I'm liking the attention to new content. So yes, however, the partner changes are meh to me. I totally get that. Brittany Dane is saying, yay, I just got my new custom URL. St. Otto is saying the subs thing is insane. Basme TV is saying, hi, great to see you guys out there today. Look, I, I'm proving to you a point right here at the same time I'm getting engagement from you, okay? Get comments early in your video because here's what happens. When, when, when a person reacts to your video, uh, they're sending a, basically it's an unreplicatable social signal, right? So bots... Robots from hackers in India and China and whatnot can't really emulate conversation. They can't emulate conversation. So when you're getting comments from people that's unreplicatable, now likes and shares, anybody can hire a bot and like and share it all over the place. Anybody can build a bot that likes and shares. So what Facebook and YouTube both have done is eliminated some of those replicatable, those copyable, right? Things that you can do, those botable things, and cut them out of the, the, the conversation. So you've got to have back and forth. The best way to do this, guys, is to get comments early in the game. So what I'm going to suggest to you, now Nick Nimmin does this. I don't know if he still does it. I think he does it from time to time. Nick Nimmin has done this. Uh, I do it in my uh, on on the B Live show. In fact, I'm going to show you guys the B Live show, and my good friend Billy Funk does this as well. So let's go back to Billy Funk's video, actually, and let's just play let's just play this. And I want to show you guys. Is it the right right audio? What I'm talking about here. Which one should you use when you're building an audience? Which one do you want to use to build your business? Which one do you want to use to grow your brand? Which one do you want to use to, to duplicate online? Which one do you want to use to actually get results and generate leads? Uh, we're going to be talking about and breaking down. Okay, so you see how right there he asked a question to his audience. He's not five seconds into the video, and he's already asking questions to his audience. I want you guys emulating this same thing in your live and in your pre-recorded videos. Now, I'm waiting for this page to load, but I want to show you another example of what Billy Funk has done to get a ton of engagement on his videos. And he's closing about 4,000 views in about 48 hours with his with his live streams. Now, I, I'm sort of like going off on a thing. I don't want to spend all time looking at his, his page. It might take a little bit too long, but he does this other thing. Okay, where what he's doing is in the beginning of every live stream, he will have a piece of paper with him. Why? Because Facebook video is played in silent mode almost, almost it's like 85% of the time Facebook is played. So he shows a piece of paper and he'll do something like this. I'm just going to kind of copy it. One for yes, two for no. So Billy Funk will log in and he'll say, hey, everybody, today we're going to be talking about the best tips for growing a Facebook page. Do you want to grow on Facebook? Type one for yes and two for no. And he'll actually get comments going right off the very bat. And what that does is this. Every time somebody comments, the video goes out into their newsfeed. Every time somebody replies to a comment, the video goes out into their newsfeed. So by getting comments early in the game, you are getting spread on your video. You are getting... It, uh, uh, engagement on your video. You are getting it out into more news feeds and the faster, okay, that you can get people to log into your video and comment, then the faster, uh, excuse me, the more views you're going to get. Now, I'm going to show you guys another example of this. I should have pulled this up earlier, but I was just live streaming. And I think, is this a good example? I want to go to the, uh, I actually want to go to the, uh, I want to go, look at this dead air. Just, I'm just killing you guys. I want to just go to so I I, I live stream on a, on a show called uh, 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 BeLive TV, and I've got uh, we've done like four episodes on here, and I I take this to heart. I'm actually googling it right now. I'm going to show you guys what I'm looking at here. So check it out. I've got these videos here. Look at what I did for this Super Bowl commercial. Super Bowl Fifty Two, and we saw some tremendous commercials in between i think there was a game i think there was a game on actually in between the commercials but we saw some great commercials what was your favorite i'd love to know in the comment area because today we're going to be talking 
about what we can learn from the Super Bowl advertisers as live streamers. So stay tuned. We have a couple surprise guests today. We're going to have a fantastic show. It's Be Live Weekly. Okay, and then after that, I do like my my song and dance, okay? So look at how what I've done there is I actually had the question up on screen. And that is designed for the replay viewer, right? Because you're going to get more views on the replay than you are going to get on the live, right? You're going to get, you get 4,000 views on, on your replay, but you're not going to get 4,000 live viewers unless you're Fox News now, now, or Fox, whatever, news channels. Uh, now I'm going to get all these like, oh, you're a Republican. Blah, 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 and I'm just naming news companies, guys. Calm down. Calm down. Oh, and nobody's screaming at you yet. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry about that. Look, the idea is this, is right as the replay viewer logs in, they're instantly engaged. So viewers that stick around are going to have something to do while they're there. So get comments early. Now, here's the other thing that comments do. Comments give you the ability to reply. And as you're replying back to comments, you're dry, that person gets an alert. And this is true on YouTube or Facebook, okay? If you, on Facebook, heart their comment and then reply, you should try to reply. Guys, this is big. Everyone bring it in. Bring it in for this one. Let's, oh my gosh. I love, I feel like I have like the mustache makes my face look weird. When you reply to comments, okay, you need to, rep now my focus is going out, son of a, Biscuit, wretched, wretched, kitchen. I feel like the guy from Home Alone. When you reply to someone's comment, okay, ask them a question. Ask them a question. The whole idea of comments is to get them to come back to the video. So now that one view just became two. So imagine you got 100 comments. You reply to all 100 of them. You just doubled your views. Do you guys get how powerful that is? Not only that. Once you're commenting, you're creating conversation, which is an unreplicatable social indicator. Mic drop, please, somebody. Right? It's a social indicator. So you've got to be getting comments early, and then you've got to go back to your comments and reply. Now, not not every comment is going to be something like, oh, let, let me out. Oh, oh, that's great. How's your baby? You know, you, you want to be careful. Uh, with asking questions because you don't want it to be, uh, uh, you know, forced, right? You don't want it to be forced. But what you do want to do is you want to get them having a conversation with you. So, for example, I just launched a video on my channel yesterday. By by the way, guys, go, go check out my channel. We are doing some really, really cool stuff with live streaming. Uh, uh, Pre-recorded videos that are training you on how to live stream. So be sure to check out the Owen Video channel, thevideospot.net slash YouTube. Andrew, if you could put that in the comment section, that would be rad. Here's the deal is... We're, we're at, we're going back to those. So someone say, Oh, and great video. Thanks so much. Then I go back with my comment and I say, Hey, you're welcome. Are you live streaming? Question mark. And you're hoping to get this back and forth going <laughs> uh, with your video, which drives people back to the video. So let's look at some of our comments over here. Uh, Aaron Jemison is saying, ask a question with a question is like my shop teacher in high school. Yeah. Hey, you know, they don't even allow shop anymore. Uh, Inglés con Ruth is saying it makes total sense. Uh, Leather Rock is saying, I bet lots of people drop and break their cell phones because they copy that Wayfair commercial. Uh, that's exactly why I bought this, this prop phone. Right? 20 bucks online. Uh, I bought a prop phone because I want to be able to do funny like, oops, I dropped my phone and then not have to worry about replacing screens. Family Aid is saying I didn't think of that. Awesome. Sharon um, um, uh, Vlogs is saying, Sunny and Lola, I know some of the larger creators can't physically reply to every comment and they just leave hearts. But I appreciate and reply to every comment I receive. Great, great, great point. We do not expect, right? We do not expect people like... Um, uh, Evan Carmichael is one of my favorite, favorite YouTubers, uh, to re reply to every comment, you know, and in that case, you know, it's kind of a different story. It's more like getting your favorite, uh, getting engagement. But the idea is this, most of us here are smaller, smaller channels. Okay. I would say most of us, you know, underneath 10,000 subs, 15,000 subs, something like that. So you have time, you have time to go back and introduce, you know, does a great job at this Nick Nimmin. 
I'll go back and I'll see that he's got 128 comments and 64 of them are from him replying to the first 64 comments. Brilliant, brilliant way, okay, to grow your channel. Sun Tour Abby is saying, I never thought about asking questions. Uh, Joy is saying, I love the idea of asking questions as soon as it goes live. Walker Moms is saying, great stuff today. Beanie Draws is saying, I'm now on the road to 15K. That's right, Beanie Draws just hit 14,000 subs this week. Beanie, we are so proud of you over here. <laughs> Give it up for him. That's right. That's right. I think that goes on way too long. And then Jason, <laughs> doing it with Jason... Uh, says I think Owen has more props than usable audio equipment. It you you uh, that hurts my feelings on the inside. It hurts me deep inside where I'm a man. Uh, look, guys, number three is get comments early. Now we're gonna go on to the next section. Okay, number three, number four, use segments. Segments are key. Now, if you guys aren't familiar what a segment is, okay, a segment is a different part in your video, okay? It's a different part in your video. I wanna, I wanna take you guys back to a classic example of uh, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, Jimmy Fallon, uh, 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 what's the other guy's name? Jimmy Kimmel, right? And I'm sure there's five other Jimmys on the web. By the way, I used to watch Jimmy Kimmel, uh, listen to Jimmy Kimmel on the radio. <laughs> radio? Who needs a radio, right? What movie is that from? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel used to be like a regular contributor to K-Rock. He would call in on Fridays and he'd do Jimmy the Sports Guy. I'm Jimmy the Sports Guy. You know, he did this whole bit. Now he's like the biggest name in late night TV. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. But what they do is they do segments. What's the very first, I'm sorry it's shaky here. What's the very first segment that every, every Tonight Show, late night talk show does? Put it in the comment section below. While you're doing that, I am going to be searching for this video that I want to share with you guys today, okay? To, I want to know what is that very first segment, okay? If you don't know, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? It is the monologue. It is the monologue. That's the first segment of the show, okay? The next segment of the show is probably something like, then they go to a commercial, Right. And then the next section is probably like a bit. Right. And they'll do like man on the street. Right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. You know, I had this question about American politics. So we asked 100 people in New York if they knew, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then they get into their guest segment. OK. Then they do another bit and then they bring in a band and they usually close with the band. OK, guys, these are segments and I highly recommend that you add segments into your live video. So, for example, on the Business of Video podcast, we open up, okay? We open up. I'm getting all these texts, and I'm just trying to shut it down. We open up with a headline. We go into the news. In fact, let me just show it to you right now. I'm going to show you guys what we do on the Business of Video podcast because we do have tremendous, tremendous watch time on this on this program, okay? So we have, this is my ROS, okay? It's my run, oh, you can't see it. It's my run of show, all right? So this is this is sort of like our guiding point for every single episode. We have the thumbnail all there. And then over here on the side, I know you can't see them too well, but over here on the side, these are our different segments. We also have some other things, uh, you, you know, like sub bullet points. We don't have, <clears throat> we don't have 25 segments in the show. We only do like four. But the idea is first, we do the news, right? After that, we jump into the share a fire, okay? After that, we jump into the guest and explain the show. We do a sponsor segment, the main segment, Nick's questions, and then we close. And then underneath here is all like the, just like what we should post in the chat bot and then what we should say for the sponsor and, and all that kind of good stuff. Now, how many of you guys are actually using a, a format like this Come on. I'm trying to trying to switch here. How many of you guys are actually using a format like this for your live show? Let me know in the comment section below. Yes or no. Okay, because if you're not, I highly recommend that you do it. Not only will it keep your show timely, 
and relevant, but it's also going to give you the format you need to scale the show, to do tons of episodes. We did 38 episodes last last year and didn't even break a sweat. This year, we've already done like six, and we're not, We're. it's like, have we even started yet? Nick is still eating breakfast, but you know, it's kind of like, when I mean, not really, it's 10 o'clock at night when he does the show, but my point is this, is that we're not even breaking a sweat. It's It's easy. And if you're stressing out over your live stream video, it's probably because you don't have a system like this uh, in place. So let's go uh, look at the comments here again and, and see who's out there. Did I see Zepeda Media is in here? Um, who shot the sheriff? Joe Roderick is saying, who shot the sheriff? I love that. And that's like share if. Okay, I love that. Um, Art with Max is saying, I never thought of doing that uh, while scripting. Good point. No, pretty much paper and pen at this point. Jen Adventures TV. Jen, did you see the shot out that we gave you in the very beginning of the show? We featured your show very... Aaron Jemison is saying, no, working on my first show. Ken Harrow Media is saying, yes, I do. Great. Great. I love that you're already doing that now. Uh, Beanie Draws is saying, my internet isn't good enough to even have a live show. Totally. Totally. I get that. True Financials is saying, I'm not, but I will start. True Financials. Okay. True Financials. Let... Are you a financial advisor show? I'd love to know because I'm trying to gather more financial advisor shows for for some, uh, like a blog post that, that we're doing. Joe Roderick is saying, yeah, I'm a little nuts. <laughs> At least you're not a cashew. Uh, yeah, those things are all good, guys. By having segments in your show, here's what you're doing. You're actively moving your show from point to point to point to point. So your audience, this goes along with the same sort of thing as... as um, uh, your your pattern interrupt. You want your audience on a journey with you. You want them walking on a journey with you, and they 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 want to see the next stop. So when when what you're talking about is going to end, okay. So I log into your show, and you're like, hey guys, today we're going to be talking about cooking with peanut oil for an hour, right? What am I thinking as a viewer? What's viewer psychology? In fact, we need to do a whole episode on viewer psychology. I'm writing that down right now. Viewer psych, okay? A whole ep uh, Viewer psychology is this, is do I need to watch this now or can I watch this later? That's what a viewer is saying in their head at any given moment. Can I watch this now or can I watch this later? And here's the deal. When you wrap up a segment and you move into something new, what you're doing is you're forcing them now to come back to your show and then fast forward to where they left off. They don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. So, what you do is you keep them on your show by wrapping up and going to the next segment. Okay? So that's number four, is using segments. Now, 4B, 4B, okay, is kind of goes hand in hand with using segments. Okay, when you use segments, you want to leverage them professionally. Okay, through a pro a, a psychological tool we call an open loop. Now, do you guys know what an open loop is? Has anybody ever experimented with open loops? I'd love to know in the comment section right now. Doing it with Jason is saying, advice from Jeremy Vest, change it up and add segments, absolutely. And by the way, guys, Jeremy Vest is the CEO of Video Marketing World. He's uh, he's uploading videos over at VidPal Bam on YouTube, definitely a channel worth checking out. The guy's brilliant, brilliant mind. And if you're going to be in the, in the Dallas, Texas area this summer, I highly recommend you check out Video Marketing World. I'm going to be there, Nick's going to be there, Brian's going to be there. Uh, all the big streamers are going to be there. Sean Cannell's going to be there. Plus, people you've never even heard of are going to be there. And the tickets are ultra, ultra, ultra affordable. So I hope uh, that you guys will will check that out. So Jen Adventures is saying, what is uh, an open loop? Okay, so an open loop is this. Well, actually, let's come back to that. Let's come back to that. The next thing I want to talk about, number five, is sound effects. You get what I did? What I did there was actually an open loop. It was actually, so I'm actually not going to go into sound effects right now. An open loop is when you tell someone what you're going to do and then you don't do it till later. So, hey, we're going to talk about, hey, today on the show, I have the most exciting guest. He built the Empire State Building. He's jumped off of every major building in the LA County area and he's going to be on our show today talking to you 
about how to grow your YouTube channel. But we're going to get to that in just a minute. First, I want to share with you guys a little note from our sponsor, right? So an open loop is where you tease something and then you say, but first, or we're going to get to that in just a minute. Guys, I'm super excited for our show today. Now, I hope you guys are picking up what I'm putting down right here because this is probably the best advice you're never going to get at a conference. It's the best advice you're never going to get at a conference. Why? Because conferences are very technical. Most of our channels are very technical. Here's how you do A, B, C, and D. My channel is very technical. Here's like the three steps to sharing your Facebook live stream. We're talking about now, we're talking about sales psychology. We're talking about viewer psychology. You want to get into their mind. So they logged in. I just coughed in my coffee, oh, which reminds me. I need to drink my coffee. Um, they want to see your show. They want to know what your show is all about. So you say, we have an amazing show today. We're going to get to that in just a second. Now you've got this open loop out there and the human mind naturally wants to close the loop. So you keep them on your show longer until you get to that segment. That is how we transition from segment to segment to segment on our show. We are constantly pitching the main guest, but our main guest doesn't even come on the air until about 25 minutes into the show. And that's how we book better guests because they don't need an hour. They only need 25 minutes, 30 minutes, okay? So use open loops with your segments. Precious Gaming is asking some questions. Guys, if you've got questions on live streaming, watch time, or anything else related to video or live video marketing, ask them in the questions below. We're gonna go to your questions in just about four minutes here. But first... I want to round up with number five, how to improve your watch time on live video. Number five is sound effects. You're listening to the Business of Video podcast, where the world's top YouTubers and marketers talk about what's working with online video. This podcast is recorded live on Facebook every week, and you can join us when you visit businessofvideopodcast.com. Now your host, Owen Video. Guys, we play that at the very beginning of our live stream. And people that are joining us for the first time go, wow. In fact, Beanie Draws was just saying today, like, Owen's the man with sound effects, right? We get these kind of comments all the time. And I have a whole variety of sound effects here. Now, who can name where that sound effect comes from? Can anybody name where that sound effect comes from? And I've got some great stuff here. For example, Aww. right? And then I could do something like, hey, guys, today I am going to be showing you how your iPhone can double as a mirror. Ooh. Ah. Right? And it's just fun stuff. Okay, who's getting it? Mario, 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 Mario. <laughs> Art with Max is saying, Pac-Man, how dare you? How dare you, sir? Although, I think it would be fun to get the Pac-Man sound effects on my on my board here. Now, I'm not using a physical board. I'm actually using a piece of software. Let's see if I can actually show this to you guys. I'm using a piece of software called Soundbite, and it's not necessarily the easiest software in the world to use, especially when you're live streaming alone, but just just... I just realized you guys didn't have sound here, so I apologize for that. Can you hear me now? I am using mic drop. That's hilarious. Uh, what I'm using here is a program called Soundbite. Okay, Soundbite. And what Soundbite is, it's a, it's a virtual soundboard, okay? And here's what we do. You can, you can click the black button here, or you can set a short key. Right, like the number, the, the key tap E, and I can play my, my buzzer sound. I've also got sounds here, right, that make you feel happy inside. 
Okay, you feel that? Now, here's what I do is I've set up this master cart with all the main sound effects for my show. And what you want to do here is you want to use your, I mean, I'm kind of being silly today. I'm a little, I'm bragging a little bit. I'm showing you guys what you can do. Uh, oh my gosh, who is rocking Simon and Garfunkel right now in, uh, in the, the comment section? I love that stuff. Uh, that's so funny because... For those of you guys that don't know, it's an amazing, it's an amazing song. So Andrew Kahn. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Okay, I'm not gonna go into more into all that. Because I grew up on hippie music like that, and believe it or not, I still listen to a lot of hippie music barefoot in the grass, playing guitar, and doing things that are unspeakable. And that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. I Different thing. Okay, here's my point. Your sound effects should have purpose. Your sound effects need to have... Man, you guys are killing it here with I am a rock, I am an island. I might just... Next time... Okay, next time I stream on the TubeBuddy channel... You guys see how I'm like ducking under my mic arm here? I can't... I can't see... I can't see the computer under my mic arm, so I'm like looking under it. Oh, son of a gun. What a stream today. Um... Leather Rock is saying some of us still do that stuff. Oh, and that's awesome. Aaron Jemison is saying the boxer. Javier is saying cut it out or copyright strike. <laughs> well, the hope is is that uh, uh, we play so little of it and it's over the the audio uh, that uh, it doesn't get much. Uh, doesn't I, I doubt that will ha that actually happen. So here's here's what everybody is saying. Copy strike warning. Hey, we'll find out that we will definitely find out. But you know what we could always do is we can cut that section out of the video using the YouTube editor. Here's what I want to say with because I want to go into your questions. Here's what we got to say. Um, fair use, great point, Leather Rock. That is fair use because we're using it in in a biography sense or a, in, in an educational sense. You want to use your sound effects in a way that makes sense for the show. Okay, so we have an intro. For example, for the Be Live Weekly show, we have an intro that we use like this. You're watching Be Live Weekly with Owen Video. Right, we have an opening for that, and then we have uh, we have a segment for uh, our our middle segment here called the workshop. Welcome to the workshop, where we review your Facebook live show. Right, and then we encourage people to share. Welcome to the share fire, where we share the stage with a member of our audience who shared the show on Facebook. Okay, and then we have our outro. And there's actually 20 seconds. Sorry, guys. That sounds uh, up really high. There goes my ears. Well, all that means is you've got great speakers, my friend. I'm actually... So we've got the show audio there, the show sound effects there, okay? Um, Aaron Jemison, you're asking a great, great question. I'm going to get to that. But then we've also got emotional sound effects, okay? I highly, highly, highly encourage you guys to get emotional sound effects. These are like, whenever someone says a good idea, we hit this. So when I hear when I, I ask my 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 guest a question, I'm gonna say something like, So tell us, how did you grow to be such a famous YouTuber? And they go, Well, the number one thing was consistency. Then I press right, and I don't make mention to it, I don't notice it, I don't acknowledge it, I just put it out there. And what that does is it gets the viewer listening in. It re-engages their senses. Now, conversely, I've got I've got another one that if someone will say, Yeah, well, one time I made a video and I got no views. You know, and again, we don't make mention of it. We just keep it going. Okay, Jen Adventures is saying behavior modification. Yeah, it's a little Pavlovian. It's a little Pavlov's doggian, right? Um, and uh, and that's what I want to to cover with you guys today. So use sound effects in your live stream because it's interesting. It creates emotion and it will keep your people watching longer so let's review the five things that you want to do is be demonstrative have a great looking background set okay use segments and in those segments use open loops get comments early i forgot to mention that. get comments early and of course use sound effects in your in your videos okay so i want to go to your questions now and start engaging with you guys a little bit more. Let me see if I can move move this over just a little, it's a little bit easier 
to read. So uh, the Oprahs or the op the operas is saying, where can we get all these sound effects? Here's what I do, guys. I buy sound effects CDs. And you can get them, just Google sound effects, right? Um, and you can also get free sound effects on YouTube. What I do is I use Camtasia. I pull the audio off Camtasia. Now, keep in mind, I am not violating any laws here or any rules. I am using, if you go to YouTube, let's just, just do it. Right? You go to YouTube and you, because, nope. Uh, just Let's just Google sound effects. Google sound effects. Sound effects funny. Okay. And then you've got all of these different sound effects that you could be using. Today, our guest has a very sad story for us. So you can, you can imagine, right, playing this. You can imagine playing this, right, with, with your audience where somebody says, you know, Owen, I'm just having a really hard time on YouTube and growing my channel. And then I start playing this. Yeah? Tell me more. Tell me more about your journey to YouTube fame. You know what I mean? You can have a lot of fun with it. Now, what you want to do, check this out. This is a perfect example. Look at what it says down here. Click here to download a free sound effect pack. Okay? Oops. It says right there, click here to download a free sound effect pack. Okay? So you want to go onto YouTube. This is where I get most of my sound effects from is I either buy sound effects packets online um, or I go to YouTube and I, I look for sound effects, but you have to make sure that the sound effects are either open use or that they're giving you free downloads somewhere. Most of these sound effects channels, they're free. M most of them. They'll tell you straight up, download them, use them any way you want. Even if their licensing is off, even if they don't have the right license there, I think it's um, uh, common use. Even if they haven't tagged the license properly on YouTube, but their description box says you can use these, take a screenshot of that, download it, use it in your streams. And um, uh, and then what you need to do is you need to load it into a sound, a sound effect system. Now, you, you could easily just record these things, guys, uh, as, as MP3s. You, you don't need to have a, a soundboard like I do. You could just go to the file and spacebar, and it'll play. But if you're on a Mac, you do have to have loopback uh, or, or something to stream the audio live onto the web. And then I use Soundbite, which is a, a soundboard, which I can just kind of press, press these things. We've got some videos coming out later this month on how to do that. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Chris Heidelbaugh is saying, should you do an open loop for an intro, like on today's show, then you do an intro for regular videos? Yes, or get right into the video. Yeah, great, great question. Um, um, uh, I'm reading other questions as well, so sorry sorry about that. Should you do an open loop for an intro? Yes. Here's what I do for the intro, guys. And this is all, this is very specific to live stream video, okay? Hey, everybody, on today's show, we're going to be talking about video cards. That's right, video cards. You can create a video and send it in the mail via a high-gloss, very fan fancy video card. And we're going to get to that in just a second. Stay tuned. It's the Business of Video podcast. And then, ba -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, and I go, hey, I'm Owen. Welcome to the show. My guest, Nick Nimmin. We have an amazing, amazing show today. We're going to be talking about video cards. But first, what's in the news? <clears throat> and then we go into our news segment, right? So what is our, what's the viewer psychology there? The viewer psychology is going, well, I'm going to stick around. And the whole idea is that, the whole idea is that, uh, uh, your news segment is not so dull and boring that you're or irrelevant that your audience doesn't want to hear it. So if you go, hey, everybody, today we have an amazing show. We're going to be talking about how to make your own latrine using simply balsa wood and uh, WD-40. But first, we have a commercial on the love of Jesus. Right now, now I personally would enjoy a commercial on the love of Jesus because I'm a Jesus freak. Right. But for those of you guys that didn't know, but on a woodworking channel would I mean, would that work for your audience? Probably not. It, it, it's going to it's going to turn them off. Right. So, you know what I, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
if people know what latrine is. So, you know, for example, lighting up a cigarette after your live stream show, probably not a good I get a good way to keep people uh, uh, listening. Now, now, of course, I'm making fun of Jason when I say that. Uh, Beanie Draws is saying Jesus was a carpenter, <laughs> dude. <laughs> you nailed it. I think he deserves what? We got to go back on that one and give Beanie Draws. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. I love it. Zapata Media saying LOL. Saint Audio is saying TMI. Yeah. Totally. Andrew Can um, is uh, asking some great stuff. Doing it with Jason is I'm going to add some MP3 audio and OBS and use them, suckas. I think it's a great, great, great idea. Game Pro Bros is saying love the sound effects. Art with Max is saying if you type sun before the YouTube, you are. Okay, that's something else. Um, Roy Gums Playas is saying what if I get distur- discouraged after I get no views of a video and I spend a long time working on it? Guys, you know. Royce Gum plays. Uh, the story of my life, man. Story of my life. And Andrew's telling me we got to go. Um, <laughs> Joe's photo. Uh, here's the thing. What if I get discouraged after I get no views on a video I spent a long time working on? What that should teach you is that the amount of time you put into a video does not have any relevance to how popular that video will be. Okay? And so you should be spending less time on your videos. Guys, I do three videos a week on Monday. I pay an editor to edit them, and I, I pay a very low rate. I pay 500 bucks a month for like 15 videos. And if you guys would like to know how to accomplish that, you can ping me in the comments section, and I'll, I'll talk to you about that. I don't want to. I don't want to do it on air though. Um, I it's never been easier to make videos, and so and I spend the same amount of time as on video one as I spend on video four. So here's the deal: spend the same amount of time on every video so that you can duplicate your scalability. Okay, so that you can make more videos because it's up to the world to decide which video does well, not how much, not how much time you spend on it. Joe's photo and video is saying, is farting a sound effect? Look, I was doing, I had a client call. I was doing business with a client and, you know, I don't think he could, I don't think he knew that I could hear. I was like. You have a fantastic microphone, man. So he's sitting there listening to me, and he's like, uh-huh, because I'm teaching him. Like, all of and he, he, and he uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I see him lift up, and I totally heard him rip one. And it was so funny because we all had to act like nothing happened, but inside I'm like, my customer just ripped one while I was explaining how to get 1,000 views. Uh, Leather Rock is saying, hey, if I use my guitar to record my own intro music or what have you, can I still get in trouble even if it's my own composition? Yeah, if you're copying someone else, um, then, then, then they'll know it. Jen Adventures is saying B.F. Skinner, uh, who is an American psychologist and knows all about a lot of this stuff. I'm looking to see if we can do one more question. One more question. One, I know we had one in the beginning, is OBS a good software to start streaming and recording. Yes, I would recommend OBS. That's how I started. I've since moved up to Wirecast. I will say that Wirecast was not the best decision uh, for me in particular because I'm a Mac user, and, and, and Wirecast is really designed for someone with a PC that's customizable and can do all sorts of stuff. Now, love the company Wirecast. This is not meant to knock them, and so I don't want to hear any like Wirecast people come on the show and be like, oh, you, you, you slammed us. Look, in my experience, I bought Wirecast because it was it, it, it could do some incredible things. But in order to do those incredible things, I really need more power, and I can't get that kind of power from an iMac. So um, OBS is fantastic. I think it's a great starter software. Nick is still doing some of his stuff with it. I'm moving into vMix. vMix is a, a multi-hundred dollar software. We're building out a whole studio in our garage, and so that's, that's what I'm... Um, uh, using and so I would recommend all of you guys uh, to to start on OBS, learn how that works, and then build out your show from there. Last question, and Aaron Jemison is saying, "Where can I get a professional intro like?" You're this? watching D Live Weekly with Owen. V- okay, that is something I got on Upwork. You guys can go to Upwork. You can hire an audio engineer, and you can use it there. Or you can you can order it there. I do pay money for those. These are not $5 orders, okay? So I've spent about 100 This year alone, I've easily spent $700 between the seven different shows that I've produced. But it's about 100 bucks. 
to get four or five different sound effects, right? Or, or sound intros. And you got to find somebody good. So I recommend you go find somebody or make them yourself, okay? You can easily make them yourself. In fact, I was doing a thing, and maybe I'll just show that to you before we go. Andrew, is it okay if I go a little bit, a little bit over today? I think I've already gone over. I'm just going to show you guys this real fact. You, you, you can make your own sound effect intros, and it doesn't have to be anything super fancy. Of course, now my internet is like, oh, let's, let's just be super slow. So let's see if this will play. Super Bowl 52, and we saw just some watch. tremendous just give it a sec. commercials in between. I th think there was a game. I think there was a game on Wait for actually, it. in between the commercials. Wait for it. But we saw some great commercials. What was your favorite? I'd love to know in the comment area because today we're going to be talking about what we can learn from the Super Bowl advertisers as live streamers. So stay Here tuned. Is. Here it comes. We have a couple surprise guests today. We're going to have a fantastic show. Here's the sound effect. It's Be Live Weekly. dun 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 Welcome back to the See show, that? everybody. I'm Owen. Super stupid and super easy. You guys can easily make your own sound effects and people will love them. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Tube Buddy stream. It's always a pleasure to work with you guys. I love having you here. And don't forget to tune in next week. We've got another great live stream coming up from the Tube Buddy channel. And go to TubeBuddy.com slash video spot get your i don't know if it's free get your tube buddy membership and start using tube buddy today thanks so much for watching guys we will see you next time